Hi, welcome back. Let's go back to the Visual Studio. All right, so that's where we were. So after playing with the get event function, so we see that in the beginning when we run when we run our graph and then invoke get event, so there is an event waiting for us and this is the EC paused Right, we saw the event values. This is the EC, right? The E value, the E value, the EC paused value. That's what's waiting for us. If we invoke get event again and again, even even at every a quarter of a second, still that has detrimental effects on the quality of the audio you can actually hear you can hear it you can hear the invocations of get event all these invocations I could hear them and then at the end when the graph was finished we got one which is EC complete event code complete and again these are the only two times we actually should have called get event all the other times we should not have called get event all right. Now, in order to have our application more responsive, what can we do with this information? That's a good question. So, in 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 this application, which does not have a user interface, so we can do anything we want. We can have an infinite loop. And who cares, right? And instead of invoking wait for a completion we can simply test the value switch on EV code and either test for 14 or 1 those are the only two values that we care for right now so let's maybe handle those two events so in case of e EC underscore pause control space will it complete me there it is in case of paused so that really doesn't mean anything that, that that's not right we first of all I'd like to simulate or emulate the effects of wait for completion so I like this loop to at least do what wait for completion does so wait for completion returns when EC complete you can actually see that the EV code returned by wait for completion is EC complete Maybe we should see it in a second, or maybe I can leave it to you as a homework assignment. Right? We haven't had those yet. And we, ha we want to have EC complete, control space, complete. There it is. Now, in case of EC complete, we can actually break out of the loop. Now, this break will not break us out of the loop, because we're inside a switch case. So, how do you break... How do you break from <laughs> from inside a switch case if you want to break out of the loop? So the best way that I know of is actually uh, is with a label. And this is end, and we'll just say in this case go to end. So go to is a keyword end, and doesn't recognize end. Hopefully it will work. F six. No, what's wrong? If, right, because we left here the EC complete. F6, F8. Um, is it the end? Is it this? The go to is giving it a hard time. Let's try a simple break. F6. Yeah, so the go to actually wants to do some code for us, otherwise it it's not happy, I guess. So go to end, we actually need to do something, right? F6, but there's nothing for me to tell it to do. What, uh, what can I tell it to do? I don't know, just uh, int i, i is equal to 4, F6. Yeah, with that it's happy. So for now we'll just leave it like this. 
maybe even like this. So for those of you that are against that are against uh, go to statements, so really there there is a reason to be against go to go to uh, keyword. The go to keyword, like any keyword, like anything else in the universe, could be mismanaged, could be misused. But that doesn't mean that you should never use it. If you should never use it, then why did they invent it? So they invented it because, I mean, these are not dumb people that invented uh, this language. So there is a usage. Otherwise, you'd have to have a flag from outside, like global, you know, variables and logic, and you could, um, you, know, you can do whatever you want. This is, for me, the simplest solution. Microsoft uses GoTo's all the time. All right, so in any case, that's what we want, right? So when we have an EC complete, we can quit. As long as we don't have an EC complete, we should invoke it again. Again, let's see. Let's see how this works. If it does, if it doesn't. File. So let's test it. One, two, three. Good. There you go. Control Alt O. Let's see the output after all is said and done. Sorry. Let me see. And that's basically what you have. So in the beginning we get a 14, and at the end we get a 1. All right. Okay. All right. So so we seem to be doing, uh, we seem to be knowing what we're doing a little bit. And as we said, for an application that does not have a user interface, then it's okay. You know, it does the job. It replaces. We've managed to replace the wait for completion. Not, um, not exactly, for two reasons, not exactly. It's not as good as the wait for completion for two reasons. One reason is we have jitter, we can hear it. And the second reason is we're invoking get event all this time. We're actually doing something. We're bothering the CPU all this time. We're taking up expensive CPU usage. For no reason, right? And also, ultimately, what we have here, it's blocking. Yeah, it seems to be. It seems to be a side of these side effects. It seems to be okay, but actually, it's not okay, in the sense that we're waiting a quarter of a second. A quarter of a second is our accuracy resolution. That's how accurate we are, meaning ultimately we get to end the worst case scenario is a quarter of a second after the file has been played. Now, if you want to wait more than a quarter of a second to get less jitter, then you, your resolution of accuracy is getting bigger. You're less accurate. You're going to end up waiting more and more time after the file is actually finished complete, completing, has finished playing. You're still going to wait an extra time out time before you actually continue on with your application. So these are a bunch of reasons why we're not as good as the wait for completion. All right. In any case, this is certainly this solution is certainly not going to be any better, only worse for our for our what? For our uh, user interface application. All right. So again, going back to the user interface application, what can we do in order to improve the experience of the user? How can we make the application more responsive? All right, so what I'd like to do, the next thing I'd like to do, before we go to the ultimate solution that the MSDN offers, the next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to, I would like to invoke get event, but instead of doing it from a loop like this, you know what I'd like to do even before then? I'd like to invoke get event. I, I, I don't want to wait anything, meaning poke, either get an event or not, after we get an event, if we get an event, then fine, then let's try and get immediately another event, however, if we don't get an event, else, let's 
leap here for a tenth of a second. Let's see how that's going to influence our uh, the the sound. Let's listen to the file. So let's test it. One, two, three. That's jitter. So we're still experiencing jitter. All right. So that that's not much better. All right. So again. So what I'd like to do. So ultimately. If we do try, so if we try to take all this knowledge and port it through a user interface application, so how would we do it? So what I would do, yeah, ignoring the jitter, ignoring the jitter, and ignoring the fact that we might have to, that we're doing polling, that we're actually calling get event even though we don't know if there is an event. We might be calling get event when there is no event. What can you do? And ignoring these the, these negative side effects, still I would like to have an application that is responsive. So what I would do is I would call get event in a user interface application. But what I would do is I would use a timer. So a, a, a timer. So I would so a timer, for example, once every quarter of a second, would invoke the get event. And this means that the application, the application's main thread is not going to be involved with invoking get event. It's not going to have to be in this loop. But instead, we're going to run through this code, run the graph, and then from a timer, or I would say maybe at this point, instead of going into a loop that's going to lock the main thread, the thread of the GUI, the user, the graphical user interface. Instead of this, we're going to let go, finished. But just before, just at this point, the, at the while true, we're going to create a new timer. And this means, and for example, for a quarter of a second, or maybe even for a second, a second timer, a one second timer. Every one second, it's going to go off. One second, it's going to go off. And when it goes off, will invoke get event. So we'll run through all the code, run the graph, and then invoke the timer. And then start the timer. And finish with this function. So the graph is going to play in the background and our main thread is going to go become and, and become available for the user to play with the with the graphics, with the window. But after a second the timer will fire and we will invoke get event for an instant. We might have a detrimental effect on the, on the quality of the sound. We might hear it in the jitter. All right, we said we'll ignore that for now. But what we will have, hopefully, is a responsive application because we're just going to test to see if there is an event. If there is, we'll deal with it. If there isn't, we'll ignore it. Fine. But the main thread is going to be available throughout all the time. Very good. Okay, so we're out of time. Uh, so this is what we're going to do in the next lesson. So as always, thank you very much and we'll see you in the next lesson. Goodbye.